Ace should have got co-production on that when I think about it. Just because when I made the original beat, uh, there was drums in it, the whole thing. It's not, it's not too late. <laughs> <laughs> he gets it. He gets co-production <laughs> on the subtractive suggestions that really made it the thing that it is because I am known for drums. Me making beats with no drums. I mean, it might happen once in a while, but yeah, that originally the drums were rocking through the whole thing. And he's like, literally, he was like, do this. Take the drums out here, bring them back in here, and and then the drums through, went through another change. So his idea to remove the drums literally made that song a little more, much more emotional because it's really about the vibes and their and their words for the verses. And I was adamant the the original drums that you had. Oh, he didn't like them. They he didn't. was like they cool. He's like try and take it somewhere else. So I had some original break beats that my boy J Zone played for me. Shouts to J Zone, and it worked perfectly for the hook. But I just think it adds to the the up and down, the epicness of it, you know, because when the hook finally comes in with the drums and everything, it just it has a has a feeling. Yeah. When the first, those first two parts of, of the first part of Pharaoh's verse, but also the first part of your verse, right. uh, that's to me highlights also you being able to use your voice as another instrument uh, during the writing process for this. I mean, you, when you know your voice is going to be that third, fourth, fifth, whatever instrument, do you have to write differently, or do you approach it differently? Do you approach the track differently? Nah, I, I honestly, I'll get, this is another one of those cases where the beat, the beat spoke to me. I couldn't write to the beat until he uh, structured it the way I wanted, which was no drums in the in the verse. Um, I couldn't write to it when the drums were in there. So once he, uh, you know, restructured it, and I had that section um, of music without the drums. That's when I was able to really, really get in there and figure out the lines. And uh, it's it's so interesting because certain songs, I actually remember where I was when I when I started writing them or wrote most of it. And I was in my car driving on my way to the Bronx to speak to a a school of junior high school kids. And that's where I came up with those first maybe eight bars. Was like in the car. Shouts to Paul Barman. Shouts shout to MC Paul Barman who who gave me the idea to even do the song. Mm. Um, he's the one who hit me up one day and was like, I think you should do a song about, you know, where uh, another MC is MS and you're kind of battling this other MC. And the idea, it was such a dope idea, but I didn't have a beat for it. I was like, I don't think I have anything for that. But if I come across something, then I'll consider it. And this beat was, I'm pretty sure I had, you had given me this beat already, but it was the old way. And then as I heard, as I thought more about it, I was like, this could actually work for that idea. And man, Paul Barman, thank you for the inspiration and the idea. And you know, what a song. Hmm. How did you guys know Farrah? I mean, how did you guys know? I mean, to be honest, like, you can't just ask any MC to become multiple sclerosis. Like, I think we both. One of the good things about working with Ace and me is, I think I could be a little more random, but it's really. It's not just he's dope, put him on the track. It's like, let's really think who would sound good on this, who's appropriate, what makes sense. And who can pull it off. Right. Yeah. And that's, you know, I'm fortunate enough to have worked with Pharaoh and have a relationship with him. And, you know, it had to be some over-the-top special skill set MC shit. And I knew he would get it. And I knew he could become the character we needed. And she sure did.